My Wait. NBA 2K17 character can't hit a wide open jump shot. Is that why you've been doing so much practice trying to get him to look like actually get him to play well? <laughs> Maybe. He can't do anything. He can't do anything. Just, Wait, so I've just, never played it like the 2K games. Like, do you actually have to like go to practice and like? Well, Rashawn, really? to tell you about that, welcome everyone to the second episode of Closed Circuit. I am one half of the problem. JT, JT, JTI, JTI, dude, it's the end of my work day. You can tell. Closed uh, Circuit Southern Edition. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, JT, AK, the Pinko Panda. And to my left, right, and center is the other half of the problem, Mr. Rashawn, a.k.a. Sover East. Now, Rashawn, Hello. specifically in NBA 2K17, you don't have to go to practice unless it's a mandated team practice. But if you want to get better, you have to go to all the optional ones. And then you just do the same drills over and over and over again. But you fail at the drills because you suck. So there's no sort of... Simulation. I mean, like, you're anything? slowly getting better, but, like, I'm averaging almost as many turnovers as assists mm. because I can't do shit. And Michael Jordan is laughing at me because I will never be the great <laughs> bull that he was. Cause see, that's, that's what I'm wondering, right? So I'm wondering, say if you want to, like, skip the mundane. Well, I don't know, because, I mean, I, I personally would probably see the practice as, like, really mundane. Is there a way to just, like... I like, mean, you can skip them. Sim they're, they're it literally, just... No, you can't sim practices. You have mm -hmm. to either go there or you don't go there. And it either build, it builds team chemistry and builds your stats up, or you just say fuck it and ignore all that. You just say, nah, not today. And then, yeah, because see, that's what I'm wondering. Because like, if I, if I were to really get into 2K, like I'd want to build my stats up, but I think I'd probably get really annoyed with the whole, like, okay, let's go to practice. Let's just shoot a couple of builds, do a couple, like, couple drills. Over well, and over. You know what makes it really exciting for me? Michael What's B. That? Jordan is my close friend. We're orange juice. We're called orange, orange juice. juice. Yeah, apparently that's orange what juice. we've come up with. And it makes me remember my good friend, Rashawn, about how we could be the basketball duo, but we decide to not, you know, let the world see that. We just want to hide in our mediocrity. Orange juice. I can't get behind that. I mean, hell, yeah, dude, I mean, I'm not I even... literally cringed. I skipped through it. I'm, wait, do they? Do they? I think I remember actually seeing it in your stream. Like when you guy, when you text in the game, do they every time just yell orange juice and then like just start not like every talking? Time. Not every time. Then, then that would make me be like, like but some I, some of the shit is so f just dumb, and I can't wait to get through it. But yeah, so I can't, I can't do shit in two K. I came and hit a wide open three, and they always put me on the three point line. Oh. But that leads us to the only discussion that we set in stone that we were going to talk about, and we only decided on it 10 minutes ago because we're professionals. Uh, single player place. versus multiplayer games. And I know that we talked about how this podcast could be a little bit of everything, and it probably will be uh, the series overall. But since we're still trying to find our legs, we're like that baby deer that like gets up and then falls on its face. <laughs> we have to do that a couple of times before we catch our stride. Now, Mr. Rashawn here does not fucking play single player games unless I give them to him and then he feels guilty and then he plays them for about five hours. Then he claims he's going to get back into them and then he doesn't play them ever again. You're part of the problem. That's why they're going away. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, my reasoning with that is just like, okay, so single player, right? More than often, you're taken, and they're just like, here's the role, and then here is you. It's like a box, actually, and they just put you in the box, and then you're just stuck in that single, pl single player box. That's you're how I see it. Like, square. I'm calling the single player archetype. Is, archetype? Let's not even try and use big words. We're not, I'm we're not awake player. enough for this shit. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to use simpler words for the sake of my sanity. Uh, like, the single-player games seem like they kind of force you in the box. You're like, And I'm not a fan of that, especially with the games that like make you be like a specific character. Like I like being able to just make my own guy. Well, what if it was something like a Fallout or a Dragon Age or...
even something like 2K, where you are your own character, you literally customize him to a T. You can even mm. scan your face in, and it can be nice. you. It could be you, the real Rashawn, in Dunk it on these fools, dude. the digital flesh. That would actually be, see, now things, so that's when it gets kind of tricky for me, right? So it's like, for Fallout, it's kind of, it seems like it's slippery because it's like Fallout, you're the, I can't remember what they the call him. The, the Yeah, the lone wanderer. So it's like they force you into that and they force you into having this son that I didn't even want to like Oh, hunt Fallout for 4, wait, ways. Fallout 4. Fallout 3 was the wanderer, right? You, no. Yeah. No, 4 is the wanderer and I think you were just the vault dweller in 3, weren't you? No, 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 I think it's the other way around. Because 4, you're the vault dweller because they call you blue. Cause you have Fair a, enough. Yeah. And then, I know for a fact New Vegas was Courier, but that's yeah, it. Oh, like, I mean, yeah. you could technically give yourself your name and customize the face and all this stuff, but at the end of the day, the role that you are is, I guess, predetermined. Yeah, see, that, that's what messes me up, to where it's like, the fact that there's this framework that it wants me to go on, and I, I guess like some people, some people might say, like, okay, so with Fallout, you can just branch off of the main quest, but eventually there's still like a main quest, nonetheless. So it's like, I don't like it towards like I'm kind of forced into this role that I can pretend to ignore, but is there overall. And I guess it's like mainly because I'm used to sandbox games to where you don't have to worry about that at all. Like sandbox games, you kind of just go about it how you'd like and then just play the game and then whatever happens becomes your story. Mm. Like I enjoy things like that a lot more to where it's like it's up to me and it's crafted by me and it's not like the devs are like, hey, so at some point you're going to have to go here. And you're going to have to do this thing. But, like, here's some other stuff. <laughs> well, so, I guess a, a better question would be, are you, like, pro multiplayer and anti-single player? Or are you, are you just not a fan of certain single player? So, hmm. So, I'm not, like, like, there's some people who genuinely don't care about single player, like, whatsoever. Like, I, I care about single player... But not. Let's see. How You're not a story not a, guy. Yeah, you say? yeah. I like just enjoying the experience of the game. Like, and I guess like like single player probably enhances the game and, and like enhances the the overall like feeling of the game. But it's different mainly because it's like I I love sandbox and it's like I love uh, being able to just play whatever sandbox game with friends. Because I think it's like you you tend to prefer like more structure, right? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, in the form of, like, if the game doesn't give me a direct objective, I create one for myself. You know what uh, I, I mean? You know what I mean there. Like, No Man's right, Sky, yeah. I've been Space Steve Irwin, like, just scanning all the, <laughs> like, that's that's my objective once I finish a planet. Like, I don't even care about the base building, I just leave. Mm -hmm. Um, Battlefield 4, I know it's multiplayer, but, like, um... 100%ing all the guns, and when I'm okay. done with the gun, just move on to the next one, whether I want to or not, whether I like the gun or not, move to it. I, I, I don't, I guess, structure? I mean, like, I like linear, but I also like open world. I mean, like, right, you, right. you know that I like anything from Last of Us, not open world at all. Beautiful story, beautiful environment, beautiful everything. Oh, yeah. Ugh. But, like, Easily. but then I also like a game such as, let's throw it back to Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which is, like, mm. so fucking big, you could just be sailing around for just doing little things and ignoring story. Yeah. I guess it just depends. So, I mean, that, that makes sense. So, it's like, you... You like structure, and then you can even kind of you can, you can even find it in, like, Sandbox, which is cool, too. Because, I mean, Sandbox, a lot of that is, like, figuring out your own object it, it is essentially building your own structure now that i think about it so it's like yeah no man's sky you build structure on the game like given that there are there are quests in no man's sky but like given you make your own structure entirely by just being like okay i'm gonna ignore the the, the quest because you have like your whole system down on how you hunt the animals and like what you do to find them and scan them and things like that so i mean it, it i guess it makes sense where it's like sandbox gives you enough of like a wide scope to where you can make your own system in a sense. And I guess that's why I like that the most because it's like with strictly linear, well, semi-linear, I guess, like single player games, they don't give you enough of like a loose framework and they give you kind of like almost the illusion, if that mm. makes any sense. Like, mm. 
I how do I how can I say like for for example maybe this might be a bad one but with like like Skyrim for example like everybody tends to know how Skyrim works like you you spawn in you're a prisoner and then eventually you realize that like I'm a I'm the Dragonborn I can I, pot like I can do the shouts and things like that <laughs> and you yeah and it's just like you're 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 told that like okay I'm this Dragonborn and then they present like the whole the whole world of Skyrim is yours to explore but right from the get-go you can't do that because if you mm -hmm. do you could possibly frag like the entire quest line mm -hmm. as i did and had to research like you have to go through a certain point of being the dragonborn before like the game gets unlocked and then even then there's still things that you need to focus on like skyrim it, it seems like it's kind of like it gives the illusion of being non-linear but i still feel like there's some sort of like pathway just being like established well there's 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 like i think skyrim is open world with structure like with predetermined structure like yes there is freedom mm -hmm. and i mean if you look at other bethesda games there's there you can literally fuck up the entire thing uh, skyrim not yeah. as oh, much yeah. skyrim oh, yeah. not as much like you cannot kill main characters in skyrim as far as mm -hmm. i know anyways unless you console command but like yeah fall i think like fallout games right you can just fucking murder anyone you could shoot them in the head and just oh, be yeah. like okay well i'll never experience that because yep. they're dead, and I'm. I actually, I like now. Like now that you bring that up, that's a good point because it's like that's one of the things that actually frustrated me. Frustrated me the most with Skyrim was the fact that like I couldn't either just like. Well, I kill, remember like, that you hmm. wanted to join the the Imperials and hmm. be like a secret agent, yeah, assassinate that guy and join hmm. the Stormcloaks, which fucking dope. Yeah. Being, really, being like a medieval assassin, that's sick. But like the thing right. is, like the script did not allow that. No. That was where the freedom ended. When you chose, I think actually you get like halfway through, you can choose to abandon, but you can't stick mm -hmm. it out until you can kill the guy and then switch over and be like, "Hey guys, I was with you all along. I was just like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, man, yeah, <laughs> you know, like." But you just can't do that. So like, <laughs> so. In that sense, it's restricted. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think in the way it's... it's When everyone talks about being so freeing is because you can go in any direction you want. Like, I mean, the way that I'm playing through it right now, literally just top to bottom of quests, not even bothering to finish, like, quest lines. Just whatever's on the top, I finish it, and then if there's another one that's not part of the same quest line, I'll just do it anyways. Because yeah. I've played it so many times, I've done a lot of things. But, that, like, that's the thing is, like... I also, when I discover something, just go in and clear it, you know, like, mm -hmm. there's nothing stopping me from doing that, however, there are certain <laughs> barriers. Ooh. <laughs> it's gonna become a staple. See, I, I have to drink so, this monster. It's like, so I, I get what you mean entirely, so it's like, it seems like it's like Skyrim is almost, it's limited in the sense that it's like, they're, they're preserving the game, like, mm -hmm. it's like, it seems like they're making it to where you can't break the game because that's that's what messes me up in the, with the fallout games for example and even like back with Marwin, because you could literally murder a guy and like later on it'll be like why can't i get this quest line because the quest giver is dead. dead yeah like you knifed him because you wanted his clothes I and think, now that quest is gone <laughs> i think we're seeing the evolution well we may be going back to stuff like that but mm. you know how like gaming and in, in general has moved towards i guess accessibility minus certain series like the souls series right right oh um, yeah they don't give, they they don't care they i think if care. someone i think if someone for instance had spent let's say 55 hours on a character in skyrim okay maybe 20 hours in it accidentally killed a quest giver right. and there's a spider on my wall oh that's not a spider um what are you doing? <laughs> it's, just, it's distracting me. It's not a spider. It's just a tiny, tiny fly. Um, damn it! I lost my train of thought. Hold on, it's coming back. When when something is accessible, okay, in that way. So okay, here's I'm retracing my steps here. Okay, so 55 hours on a character in Skyrim. Say that yes. 20 hours in. Okay, they so so we're we're talking like in the past at their twenty hour mark they accidentally killed a quest giver. 
okay? Then at 55 hours in, they find out about this quest that they really want to do. So they go to find the guy, and he's not there, because he's dead. Yeah. And now, people back when, like, Morrowind was popular, probably would have been like, oh, well, that's actually kind of cool that I just ruined that because, you know, like, it's, it's, it's believable. But now we are so entitled that go back and be like, this is horse shit. Like, I want my quest. This is so cool. And now you're going to reject me from doing all the blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm going to have to restart, blah, blah, blah. You know, oh, like, yeah. cause an uproar. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. I may be one of the – I you know me. I like to experience everything. Like, right. for instance, uh, one of the things that's actually stopped me from trying – I have XCOM 1. One of the things that's ha- stopped me from playing it is because I don't know if I want to be one of those safe scummers or if mm. I want to just dig in the dirt and if someone dies, say RIP and move on. Like, Mass Effect 2, for instance, when they have – and this is like – this kind of goes into choices. It's mm. like Mass Effect 2, I fucked up. I slept with the wrong girl <laughs> and and the other one died. And I regretted it for the rest of me playing the series because that character did not exist for the rest of the trilogy. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. man, how old was I? I think I was like 17 or 18 playing that. And I was just like, ah, like if I had known that, I wouldn't have done it. But I did. So, it, and it beat me up. Obviously, the, like I still finished it. I didn't feel slighted. I knew that there was choices like that. Like you can, you can be middle ground. Uh, what is it like? Paragon or Vagabond? Like Paragon yeah. is good, and then either Renegade or Vagabond is bad. I forget what it is. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, and that's the thing is like to to not go too far off in the single player thing in general. It's just like I think a lot of people are afraid of. I think there's two there's two distinct groups. There's the ones who like having structure. So let's say I'm that person just because Mm. even in a free roam sandbox game, I try to give myself things to do because I like to have something to go for. And then there are the ones and we'll say you're on that other side, which once again, not saying either side is good or bad, (laughs) you know, it's just preference. Um, Like you will just, you know, you're fine with going into a map and just fucking shit up. Like in No Man's Sky, for instance, you just want to be like a bounty hunter slash pirate. Yeah, and that literally all that means is you're just flying in space and you shoot things, yep. and then you're gonna have to land on planets to get some stuff and then take off and go. And like, for me, I don't want to leave a planet until I found everything, and then I go mm. to the next planet. I don't care about shooting things. I don't care about that. So you know, it just it that's how it kind of plays into it. Yeah, and it's like so like a quick uh, message or a quick message. Wow, a to quick our sponsors, Monster TM. Sponsor me. Act. If only. That would be the dream. Could you imagine just getting like big crates of monster just like mailed to Dude, you? Dude, I'd be like Tim the Tap Man. I'd put it like right behind me on this table. Finally, this table would have some use just right there. That would be perfect. <sighs> but but yeah, so like I think one of the things that is with like New Age Gaming just as a whole like broad spectrum, I feel like there's a lot of people lately with how the game, how games have been made, they don't want to accept like they don't want the onus to be on them if they fuck up. Do you get what I mean? Like, they don't want to accept that, like, I was the one that fucked up this choice. It's and you know what? Like, you know what? That plays into real life. That plays into real life. Do you know what I mean? Do you know yeah. what I mean? With, with, with like, with social media in general and just overall how we are going as a society, no one wants mm-hmm. to accept when they are fucked up. Everyone yeah. wants to play it off on the other person. Mm. I didn't pay my rent. Oh, it wasn't me. It was the guy next door. He distracted me and, and told me to go to a bar. So I spent money at the bar. And damn it. Right, right. His fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, no one wants to accept responsibility. And I think that's something that's taught when you're younger. And mm-hmm. not to stray too far away from video games. But, you know, it does play into, like, a real life thing. Which is oh, yeah. people are afraid of fucking up. And the reality uh, is that you are actually better off fucking up. You're better yeah. off making mistakes, so then you learn for the next time. Yeah, and see, that's, that's I feel like because of that, it's shifting the design of games because, like, because mm-hmm. of the fact that people don't want to fuck things up and they need it to be, like, pristine and perfect and have the devs program all these, like, safety things. Mm-hmm. It 
it's limiting what kind of games we're having be created now at this point. Like it's like they're making games where it's like the scope of choice is so limited because mm-hmm. of the like the the margin of people. How can I how can I word it? Like the the scope of decisions being limited based off of like the margin of error people are willing to to create because it's like with yeah for example I'm I'm even gonna go back just for a little bit for like to Mass Effect like how you said you slept with the wrong uh, girl and the uh, like she died as a result mm-hmm. like I've had I I can't remember what I did but I did I do remember having to sacrifice one of the characters and when they weren't in the next game I was actually troubled because I realized they would have probably been really useful to have around for the story and in combat and things like that mm-hmm. and because of that it made me be a lot more careful with my decisions. Like it made me better as a gamer, if that makes sense. Like it made me more hesitant and attentive to detail. That's what like, so I just pulled it up here. Uh, It's a PC gamer article. Uh, It's essentially about Dying Light 2. So you and I are both huge fans of Dying Light. We've played it over and over together. Some hardcore parkour shit that we pulled off in that game. It's a lot of fun. Probably end up returning to it at some point again before the sequel comes out. Um, and this is kind of like an argument against what we're saying that gaming is turning towards a different thing. Is uh, Techland C- CCO claims Dying Light 2's choices will form the ultimate vision for the open world. And what they, when they like demoed it, they were essentially showing that like there's tons of freedom. So I think that stuff is still there. I just think that like a majority of people don't are almost afraid of it question mark you know like yeah I, and once again it comes back to messing up and another game that quickly came to mind is like the walking dead telltale games mm-hmm. i got mm-hmm. the worst ending in season two the worst ending out of five mm. now my friend in high school we were playing at the same time he got the worst ending as well we both we both got the worst ending difference was is i lived with it yeah. it technically is still my save that I could go to season three, but because the fourth one just came out, I decided to scratch it and do an entire new playthrough on stream, mm-hmm. which will be awesome. Going, but uh, like, there's people that just went back. They're like, nope, and reverted their save and did a different choice because they did not want to deal with the choice that they did. And spoiler alert for season two of The Walking Dead, uh, Telltale. So I'll just like flash big letters or something like right here, like yeah, just, just somewhere, um, somewhere, <laughs> yeah, um, like. There, there are there are either three or five endings, so maybe not okay. terrible spoilers, just because I don't really remember it. But for instance, you could have uh, one of the one of each of the people live, okay, mm-hmm. that was with you, or you could go off on your own, as from what I remember. So I think there are, were three endings, maybe five. I can't remember. I think there was. You know what? I'm gonna look it up because oh. I don't want to give bad information. Was it The Walking okay. Dead? Season 2 Telltale. See if it will have the ending here. Development, reception. That's not it. Excuse me. I actually kind of want to say a quick point, too, on like your friend, for example, like while you're searching that up, like Mm -hmm. at that point, I'm wondering it's like if you if you save scum so much and like make different decisions because you've already seen where the other one leads. Is it is it still a game anymore, or is it, or is it just kind of you directing a story at that point? Like that's why I'm wondering if it's like if it's really a game, or if it's just you kind of forcing the story and then gratifying like well, you know, some sort of gratification. That's also a thing. Have you ever watched a movie, read a book, watched a TV show where like you could see the ending coming and you wish that you could change it? You didn't want it. You wish that you mm-hmm. could go back to a certain point in said entertainment and change yeah. it for what you wanted. I mean, like, mm-hmm. no movies are really coming off the top of my head, but I know I felt that. Same thing with uh, books. Okay, book that comes to mind off the top of my head. Remember Lightning Thief? Percy oh, Jackson? Yeah. Of course, of course. Remember, remember the second series that happened? Yeah. So you I mean, never... like, you're referring to, like, the spinoff series? Yeah, but it has, it still has Percy, Annabeth, all those, and then three new people, four new people? Yeah. No, 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 I, like, five there's, All I remember is, like, Jason, there's yes, Piper. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's all those people. Um, one of the characters dies. I'm not going to say who, but long story short, something happened in the final book that, like, I didn't want to happen. And I actually left mm-hmm. the final, the final like, 30 pages for, like, two days because I knew what was coming, and I didn't want it to happen because I didn't want that to be how it ended. 
Oh yeah. And you know that like and then when the book ends there's like this huge hole because you've devastated another another thing. Hmm. Avatar the Last Airbender. Great show. I have yet to watch Korra because I don't want to let go of those characters. They're dead. Oh, see, yeah. That's it, it, because it's future. Yeah. They're dead. Like and I don't want to let go of them because I love them. Hmm. Well, I mean, they they there's some that are still alive and like they they have them to where they they'll they'll pop up, but it's kind of like not as they don't have prevalent roles like how they did in the original one. So it's like you're introduced to these new characters. That, that, they're not, it didn't feel like they were trying to like force you to like them, but it did seem like they were kind of like like saying like these are the main people, mm-hmm. these are your old characters that you're used to. This mm-hmm. is the hierarchy now. It's like it 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 did feel like that. But so I just pulled up, so I have it here. So this is this is Wikipedia, so you know it's legit. Okay, there we go. Um, so at this point, the story diverges based on the player's decisions. The player can save Jane by shooting Kenny. Excuse me. <clears throat> Only to learn she had, she hid AJ, so that's the baby that you're taking care mm-hmm. of for the whole season, uh, in a nearby car and faked his death in an attempt to prove to Clementine how unstable Kenny was. Thereafter, hello. Excuse it's, me. It's really dark. I'm sorry. I, I just I couldn't. I'm talking. We back. I'm, I'm walking sorry. here. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Banned. Hashtag banned. Let's get that trending. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it faked his death in an attempt to prove to Clementine how unstable Kenny really was. So at this point, by the way, I should give a little more context. You are left. It's the baby. You, who's Clementine. Jane and Kenny. Okay. And okay. Kenny has cr- increasingly become unstable. He's lost his son. He's lost his eye. He's just kind of woo. You know, that's just what happens when trauma hits. It's PTSD. Jane, right. I don't remember too much. I think she has a little bit more of a stable head on her shoulders, but she still has her own issues. So that's why they say, like, for instance, so one choice is shooting Kenny because you think that he killed the baby because he's mm-hmm. unstable. Uh, so attempt to prove Clementine how unstable Kenny was. Thereafter, the player can forgive Jane and return with her to Carver's abandoned camp and the choice whether or not – and has a choice whether or not to take in a family of three. Okay? Next line – Alternatively, the player can let Kenny kill Jane because they get in a fight, after which they find AJ hidden in a car and continue on to Wellington, where overpopulation forces the player to choose whether to enter Wellington with AJ or remain with Kenny. Okay, choice two. Uh, yeah. Regardless of who is killed, the player also has the option to abandon the survivor, either by Clementine shooting Kenny or abandoning him as she could similarly do at, to Jane as well, and set off alone with AJ, passing through a herd of walkers disguised in, disguised in walker blood. That's what I did. Mm-hmm. And that's the worst one, apparently. Because you're off on your own. You fucked up. Like, the, everything has gone to shit. You have this baby. You're like, a, I think in this, she's like still like 12 or 13. Okay. And like, she's... I think, though, at the, if I remember correctly, you end up stumbling upon some survivors. But you don't know if they're good or bad. Like, it just cuts. Mm. Now, obviously, we know because there's been a third and a fourth season. Nothing yeah. <laughs> nothing bad happens to her. But that's the thing. is like That's still technically the worst ending. And I know people who save scummed to try and get... Specifically, they tried to get the one with uh, Jane. Mm. Uh, because then you get a new group of survivors. And the overpopulation one, once again, was too much of a choice for some people. So they just wanted... Jane. Well, yeah, because see, that, that does seem like in the end, it just kind of like, uh, just everything seems like it always boils down to like play style, for example. So it's mm-hmm. like some people don't mind play uh, safe scumming because it's like Excuse they me. figure like, okay, like it's, it's, it's my game. Like it's my single player experience. Like I might as well have fun with it. Like some mm-hmm. people say like it's since it's my world, my isolated, whatever, like this is my area. I can do what I want within this framework that the devs set for me. So they'll just do it, and they'll they'll save scum for it. But then the argument could be like, are they missing parts? Are they missing parts of the game, or otherwise not experiencing some, experiencing something that would maybe enrich their experience? Like, because mm-hmm. it it does seem like it would be a little bad to. I'm like passively cleaning my room here. It does seem like it would be a little bad if they just only played the game to where it's just rainbows and sunshine all the time like no no one has to die no one has to make any hard decisions you just play it like it seems like there's there's something mm-hmm. missing from that especially for like a walk well not just not only just a walking dead game but like 
most games if you do that. The one thing I'm thinking is XCOM. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you know better than anyone because you invested. Oh, yeah, so, I can talk about like, it. You, yeah. you know, like, you got people who were your best soldiers and they died. Mm-hmm. And you didn't save XCOM? Question mark? I don't know if you did. Yeah, so it's like, so with my, my XCOM 1 gameplay, I remember for about maybe 75% of the game, I had this one main squad. Like, my barracks, you have the option to uh, recruit soldiers. You can recruit them at different ranks once you get upgrades, things like that. But I never actually recruited I, I never recruited anybody because i just had these five guys that i carefully played with and when one of them died during a mission because i screwed up royally and essentially sent them in on a suicide run because i wasn't being attentive enough i sat there for a bit and like i actually felt I actually felt like the gravity of my decision for sending them in there and i was thinking like well, fuck, because one, I'm going to have to start out with like a new recruit and he's going to have to rank up and get to where, like, let's call her Wendy, where Wendy was, and try and see if I can rank her up through all these missions. But she might die, too, because she'll be out of her league. That's okay. Like, I don't need their burgers anyways. Well, I mean, apparently not, because she was, like, taken out of the... She was, she was taken away, and I ended up actually save-scumming. But what happened was, after I save-scummed, I did another mission, and I lost a different member instead. So I just ended up having to live with those decisions, and mm-hmm. it made me more cautious as a player to the point where it was like, well, it maybe doesn't sound like it, but most of my squad died to the point to where I only had one guy left, and I protected him as if he was like <laughs> the king piece, and he made it. He made it till the very last mission, and I was actually, when I play XCOM 2, I'm thinking of recreating him. Have you like, lived through? Played it yet? XCOM 2? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's... It's I've heard a it's lot. harder. It's it's infinitely harder. Like XCOM one gave you so much room for error to where it's not even funny. Like looking at it in hindsight, there were so many times where it's like, if I pulled what I pulled in XCOM one, I would be royally boned. Because it's like how did I describe it? XCOM two, there's a lot of like reworks to like maybe like even like their stealth system, the AI are smarter, they're deadlier. So it's up to the player to just be I would just outplay them like it's like one big game of chess and they don't really hold your hand that much like your people will die and they will die like fast so that's one of those games where it's like if you save scum you're gonna have a hell of a time pretty sh- like i'm pretty sure <laughs> so it's like well it's it's just the truth honestly it's like if you save scum in that game you're gonna be reloading and saving back to back and like you're gonna have to eventually at some point accept that you will lose people like even the best of the best will lose people because the enemy's difficulty there's there's no way you can get through a mission and not have somebody either like critically wounded or lost. So it's like decisions are heavy in that game easily. Hmm. And you know, just like a quick segue into the second portion here, that's making me kind of wonder why I'm so into multiplayer games because multiplayer games don't really give you that degree of choice, honestly. Well, obviously there is a there's a huge choice. It's whether you use gold or diamond camo when you max out every weapon. Ah, yes, easily. Deep philosophical... Deep... Wow, okay. All right. (laughs) Philosophical thinking here. I thought you said you were going to avoid big words, because brain no do good today. Yeah, that was like part two of just why I should speak simpler, so I'm going to keep that up. It took me 40 minutes to mop up a puddle today, because my brain was just not on. Like, I was just sitting there and just had the mop in the puddle, and then I was just like, wait, it's not going to soak up anymore, and I'd put it in the bucket, squeeze it out, and I'd just... (laughs) <laughs> and just sit there and be like okay how do i attack this okay i'm just gonna pick it up now and put it back in the bucket and i just did it for like 40 just minutes dunk it again just like <laughs> yep. yeah but so it's like so with like multiplayer games now that i think about it just like mmos like a lot of people there are people who will only play specifically like mmos and they will get invested in them for years and it's like i'm wondering if that's one of the trade-offs for it's like MMOs are hey, look at this golden lighting. MMOs know, are it like makes a, you look better than you actually are. <laughs> I'm gonna Speaking of MMOs that. though, like oh. World of Warcraft came out with its new expansion and oh, yeah, so everyone's Battle going nuts. Azeroth, right? I, I don't know. I don't World of Warcraft. I've never played it. I've never touched that game. I knew I knew uh, the, uh the, the, the friends of mine who like got addicted to it. You know, like straight up mm. just like World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft, and like I never touched it. Oh yeah. So See, and then like all these expansions, like Twitter was blowing up. Like 
RIP to all the people that will lose to World of Warcraft in the coming week. And, like, I'm just thinking, is it really that big of a deal? I don't even get it. I mean, and that's also because I had never really played an MMO. So I don't even know really, like, what it's about. I don't even know if I'd enjoy it, but I don't want to try it. Yeah, see, so that that's the thing. That's the trade-off, right? So for single-player games, you get, like, okay, so eh, it's, it's, it's hard to nitpick through it. So single-player games, you get your own personal instance of something you get your own area to play around with you are essentially god no matter like the linear structure no matter the free roam degree of it yeah. if it's single player you are essentially god you can do anything you want to well and, that's like you know in the yeah. call of duty campaigns incredibly mm -hmm. unrealistic no matter where they set them one man yeah. isn't just gonna clear out like a room of 30 people oh yeah i okay. mean unless he's like sylvester stallone but like that's the thing is you're not okay like yeah. you just you just everyone else is just kind of like filler like hey we're mm -hmm. here to make it seem like it's a squad effort but in reality you got to kill everyone because yeah you they don't soak kill up everyone, bullets and yeah. they, they blind fire and miss everything <laughs> especially the obviously the newer as games get better and technology gets better like the cannon fodder essentially get better mm -hmm. but like that doesn't excuse the fact that you go back and play like world at war or like modern warfare 2 where they're like, sit, like they're they'll be staring at you, and then their gun is just like, Shh, sh, sh, sh. <laughs> like they're not even paying attention. They're just trying to make it seem like they're helping you. Right, they never, right. That shit never happens. Hmm. And see, it's like that. That's in addition to like one of the trade offs, right? So with MMOs, like okay, so both have stories. So if we have like a little Venn diagram here, they both they got the the middle section and story. Uh -huh. So they both have stories, but with MMOs, you have this persistent world with real people who can potentially depending on the framework of the game actually shape the game's development and it's like i think in world of warcraft's case this game is let's see when was world of warcraft 2005 like 2005 world of okay. warcraft yeah 2003 or 2005 is what i want to okay say. shit it's even well, older it's... yeah that makes sense so it's like it's a game from 2003 and it has survived wait did you actually like... look it up am i right Oh no, you might be. Hell, let's World see. World of check. Warcraft release dates. Shit! <laughs> I was directly oh. in the middle. 2004. I danced around the date. So 2004, right? So this game has survived 14, 14 years. years. Jesus. And Christ. like, think of games like EverQuest. Like EverQuest was a big MMO, for example. If you go on Ever, if you download EverQuest two right now, you will see that that server is only populated by like cult fanatics, like mm -hmm. people who have devoted years and years and mm -hmm. years of time into that game, and they're not giving they're not giving it up. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the difference is that World of Warcraft and EverQuest, there was a different in management to where their expansions were more gripping. Their, their systems were more accessible. Like, World of Warcraft is the accessible MMO. EverQuest 2 is essentially homework. Mm -hmm. It becomes nothing short of homework. So I think it's, like, a mix of the fact that the game has constant, like, expansion packs. Well, some, some would argue hours, that, like, like, anything, any game can turn into homework. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, I search for collectibles that don't do jack. Right. And I literally have, like, guides up on my laptop. And some mm -hmm. would say that's homework. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, I, I can understand that. Yeah. And that's a, like that. That's where that saying comes in of like, if a game turns into homework, I don't want to do it. Well, certain people mm -hmm. like that shit. Especially if it's your job. I mean, like, obviously right now it's neither of our jobs. So we do mm -hmm. have to, we do have that aspect of time. But like... <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I don't really know how to like describe it. You know, like, some people are just fine with it. And other mm. people aren't. I mean, like I'm yeah. looking, I'm looking at the expansions right now, and there's been there's been seven total expansions for World of Warcraft, uh, and the level cap has risen between ten and five levels uh, for each expansion, and it looks yep. like there's an average of two years between each. Dude, fucking English, <laughs> between each expansion. Um, so you got to bet your ass that when one of these expansions is announced people then jump into world of warcraft and grind yes just grind their level that's the one oh, thing yeah. that i 
feel like I know is like this game, you just got to grind until you can get to the point where you would be successful in this expansion. Then you grind through that expansion to the raid or maybe the expansion is just a raid. I don't really know how they work. I'm not. Yeah, so I could give like a, a like brief synopsis. If you like. Were you a, were you a wow player at one point? Yeah, but, Sean? but not, is not that something you hid from me? Oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm okay with talking Crippling about it. Addiction. Like, there's some people who get really sweatily into it, but it's like, so before I get into that, though, it's like, fun factor. Like, earlier you said some people see it as homework and some people don't want to do homework with their games. It's all about the fun factor, right? So it's like, like how you said, like, if this game turns into homework, like, I don't want to play it. But some people see this game is homework, it gives me something to do. I went with, I don't want to play it. And, like, I was playing a while for a bit, and I didn't even really hit, I didn't even max level. Like, I think... I can't remember. I think I have up to, well, the expansion that doesn't matter. But like, I'm I managed to stop myself at like maybe eighty five. Eighty five like was that I have. Eighty five is the cap for Cataclysm, which is the third expansion. Mm. Yeah, so I stopped myself at eighty five because it got to the point where it was like I was in a guild that was kind of like trying to grind people up from like expansion to expansion. Like they would try and build up like raid missions and things. How like that. How hard is leveling? And, it's it's say? honestly at least from your experience obviously but it's not hard at all hmm. if i'm entirely honest with you because you know how i am like i'm a casual player essentially like i will pick up my games i'll be like ah oh, this is so fun and then i'll just like put it away yeah i'll just i'll just be like done and i'll just do something else and wow i was able to hit 85 over the course of like two subscriptions which i probably didn't even need to do but it was because i was so casual that i was like wasting game time so it's like right. I remember you you were sh- subscribed shortly to WoW when we were in college. Actually, yeah. I I just realized that. Um, mm. Right, and then you were saying like it, it's really tough with those games because you did buy a subscription. So then every time you're not playing it, you're essentially wasting your money. It's very oh, different yeah. from buying like you know I have. Let's see, I'll just pick a random game. Ah. Infamous one and two. I bought this for thirteen bucks. There's dust on it, <laughs> so uh, you can tell I haven't even played it yet. Um, but that's the thing is, I'm not wasting. Wow, dude, look at how professional this even came in. Look at, it. you see that? Nice. You got Infamous two, and then they just kind of slipped Infamous one in here. <laughs> they just take it and just like ding. Yep. Um. Ah. But that's the thing is, I bought it for thirteen bucks, and I have it forever. I mean, in, unless mm-hmm. my PS3 dies or the disc dies, um, right. you know. So I'm not wasting time not playing it right now. If you don't mm-hmm. play WoW, what's the subscription price and what's the time period? Uh, so I believe it might have been fifteen dollars for thirty days. I'd like to think fifteen dollars for a whole month. If I remember, fifteen for a month. Wow, I was thinking yeah. more like twenty five. So that's actually better than I thought. Let me actually. Because I, I'm, I'd like to think it was uh like fifteen because and I it could have always it, rose or risen. Yes, yeah, that's true. Because I like I know if it was a bit more, I wouldn't have paid. But it was like that was my main issue. So it was like I know I knew that I was yeah. So they, they have a whole like host of plans that go lower depending on how long you're gonna do it or the duration of it. But I would always do like one month, and I would just be like, okay, like maybe I can jump in, play with my friends or something, have some fun, but. My most recent like subscription that ran out maybe either earlier this year, I believe, it got to be not fun because it was like I joined this guild and then I because I was so friendly in the guild I unexpectedly rose and like he wanted to plan all these events and he right, wanted I me remember to... that you were getting like pressured. Yeah, yeah it was essentially to, like... peer pressure. <laughs> yeah, he was the guild leader, he he wasn't planning anything. So he told me like, okay, so I want you to plan a, a social event, a party, I want you to build a Discord, I want you to maybe look into a website, I want you to, to plan our raids, our our dungeons, maybe do some PvP arena. And it was just like he wanted me to essentially sit there and manage it as if it were an actual like business. Like he wanted to see like pretend like it was a real real deal, real like And to him like, it was like that big of a deal. But for someone yeah. like you who is casual, which is there's no problems with being casual whatsoever. Like mm. but for him it's just like those two play styles clash. Like you oh, yeah. you 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 meet and you're good when it's just the gameplay. But then once again, when you create extra work for it, that's where like for instance for you it's just like dude it's it's a game I play. And I just want yeah, to play the game with some cool people. And, you know, if I'm not on for something, like, okay, no big deal. And then for him, it's just like, okay, 
Six oh two in yeah. twenty seven seconds. We are going in this building. We should be all in there by six oh seven and thirteen <laughs> seconds. And when we're all together, then we need to beat this in under one hour forty seven yep. minutes and six seconds. Like you know, like it's just like all micromanaged, and it's just yeah, not how it goes. There's a lot of people that are like that too with the game zone. And it's like, I guess that's another trade off with multiplayer games that you get people who can be like really, really sweaty about it. Like Arma 3. <laughs> I want to talk about Arma 3 for a second. Like <laughs> when you and I play Arma 3, it's semi tactical to the semi. point where it's like, like we realize that like it's just a game. We're just two guys no, playing Sean, the game. It's real life. Okay. It's life that's, or death. That's, it's life that's what some people see it as. Like you have some units to where they will they'll they'll get all the add-ons, which only enhances them. It only makes them stronger. They'll get all these add-ons that like add to the realism. You have to fucking you have to program a radio. You can only talk if you're in this like this distance of each other. Mm-hmm. Like they they download all these things, and to them it, it further immerses them, and it makes them think that it really is real life. Mm-hmm. And like they will be actually yelling at you to do things. Like, I won't just stop fucking around and press this Alt F4 and close the entire game. Mm-hmm. Like, they they make it seem like it's, like, they're they're invested. Like, well, multiplayer games, people can yeah. get, like, brutally invested, and it can impede on your gameplay, while single player you can't because you're in the bubble. Well, remember with the multiplayer game as well, especially Arma, like, there's someone that we watch that when he plays those games, sometimes it takes, like, 30 minutes for a command Mm. to get ordered to the top of the rank. Right. So he's literally sitting in his chair, playing video games like mouse and, and keyboard, sitting there, and he's waiting for someone else on the end of a microphone to be like, yeah, let's let's move the, this digital tank five digital feet, and then we'll digitally sit there and smoke our digital cigarettes. You know, and like, and like, uh, and I know it kind of sounds like I'm shitting on it, and I know mm. that I do stuff that's probably just as ridiculous in certain games. I mean, like, I refuse to leave a planet in No Man's Sky to scan a digital creature for nothing. You know, like, mm. uh, but at the same time, it's just like, you got to acknowledge when. And once again, I think it plays into, like, that person. That's his job. He wakes up mm. and he plays games for six to eight hours a day. And he goes to bed and he gets paid yeah. for it, you know? And, like, for us, like, uh, you know, so you're in school, you are, you're also going to be working, you know, mm-hmm. social life. And then not saying those guys don't have a social life, but you get what I mean. And then for me, you know, like I work, I work eight to 10 hours a day. Then I come home and, uh, you know, depending on social hours or whatever, like I don't have the time to just sit there for 30 minutes and, and like wonder if I'm allowed to move my tank five. Yep. So I think what we're finding here is there's pros to cons, pros and cons to both of them. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. You know what's yeah, even that's, more interesting? Yeah. What's I that? have to pee, and I don't know if I should pee. I mean, what are you thinking? You thinking outro, or are you thinking a quick pause? I'm thinking <laughs> a quick pause. Seven hours later. And we're back! La la la! I have the pee. I have the bladder of a young old woman. Back and rejuvenated, slightly less sweaty, slightly less full of pee, slightly less full of toxins. Uh. I'm still trying to remember a train. Of, we, were, we were talking about sweat and multiplayer games, right? Sure. Okay, so let's see. Oh, the grind I'm... of multiplayer games. There we go. I yeah. had a di- I had a different subject that we could talk about real quick. Okay. And s- since we pretty much like covered our bases on that, hmm. are you familiar with the James Gunn firing from Guardians Three? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Now, did you see the story that, uh, from pop popular from public pressure, they had talks with him. But ultimately, Marvel and Disney have both decided to decline on bringing him back. So they were debating it, but they didn't. Yeah, so I was reading articles about that. To where it's like, uh, I saw one where the headline might have been like Marvel in talks to Marvel in talks to try and, to try and get 
No, Marvel was trying to do something to get James Gunn back on board. And I they, remember... They were just... Essentially all they did, the cast members and everyone, like, public pressure to just get a meeting for James Gunn to go back in there and have talks. Like, can yeah. we get through this? Can we get by this? Ultimately, I didn't read the article, so I'm not entirely... Like, this is more just like a personal recount. Recount? Yeah. Recount? Re- recount? Re- recount? Either, either way, potato, potato. Eh. Tomato, tomato. Um, uh, of the events. And now I'm curious because, for instance, Dave Batista said he was going to leave mm. if they didn't bring him back. And, yeah. like, uh, you know, after undisclosed events in Infinity War where I will not say certain things because I know that it did come out what, three months ago, but still, people may not yeah, have watched it. Yeah, semi-recent, yeah. I'll keep it. I'll keep it tight-lipped for now. Um, but he doesn't want to come back for Guardians 3. If James Gunn, and I'm wondering if he's going to hold fast onto that, um, or if they're going to have to do something. Yeah, so see, I, I'm actually, I think it is actually affecting the cast, because I didn't, again, I, I didn't read the article that much either, but I read one where it was like, Chris Pratt, uh, like in an interview, was talking about how it's like James Gunn not being there is actually leaving us in a really hard predicament mm-hmm. to where it's like the cast is kind of in shambles. There is no sort of like coordination amongst the writers. Like everything, it's like they had this product and then now it's just like they confettied it and mm-hmm. now they're trying to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's like I'd like to assume that it's like Guardians 3 is like on hold, like production's on hold because this whole thing's going and on. That, and that kind of brings me to a, a bringing this podcast away from video games because we'll be doing that from time to time. Um, how do you feel when, for instance, like say, say Guardians 3 does go ahead, but Drax is recasted? Are you the type of person who can just look by and be like, oh, Drax has some slightly different physical changes. He may look different, but it's Drax. Like, you don't even think about the act, like change of actor. You're just like, it's Drax. Or are you the type who's just like, man, this kind of fucks with me? Because technically, like, everyone talks to him like it's the same guy. Like, it's the same person from the first two movies and the other movies that they starred in. Uh, but it's not. Like, for me, that bothers me. If you look back at Iron Man 1 and 2, where they swapped Rhodes out, it was... Uh, Oh man, was it Cuba oh, shit. Gooding I, Jr.? I, yeah, I think was the actor that was originally Cuba Gooding Jr. Maybe I'm off. Nope, I am off. It was who is that actor? And Let's this is coming. See. This is honestly coming from someone who does not watch as much of the Marvel. Oh, Cinematic Terrence Howard. Universe. Yes, Terrence Howard. They they just look really fucking similar. So they swapped Terrence Howard out. For, I didn't even realize um, that actually. The other guy that now I'm forgetting, of course, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Cheadle. Yep. Cheadle. Cheadle. Yeah. Yep. And um, that happened, and I mean, in light of events and it just being one movie, and then it's switching. It's not that bad. Yeah. But you have Drax played by Dave Bautista. Who has been mm. in Guardians One, Two, and Avengers Infinity War. And I believe, right, right. and and that he may have appeared in other things and I can't recount, but that's also because I only watch the Marvel movies and catch up when the next Avengers comes out. Like that's the culmination of everything. You don't want that shit mm. spoiled. Um, oh, yeah. It's weird. Like you 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 know, like uh, it's so tough to think about, like, who would step in or would they cancel the project? Mm. I mean, another thing, have you watched the new Star Trek movies? I think the last one I watched had Khan in it, and that was, okay, like, Okay, so that's what, the second two. one. Yeah. So yeah. there's been three. Mm. Um, I don't know if you know about this, but you know Chris Pine, who plays Kirk? Mm. Okay, yeah. so you know Chris Hemsworth played his dad in the first one, sacrificed himself mm. in the first, like, ten minutes? Well. Right. In the fourth movie, he uh, Chris Hemsworth's character was supposed to be back. It was like another time traveling theme. Well, guess fucking what? Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pine are not going to be in Star Trek Four because negotiations fell through for contracts. So they're not there. 
That's the two main characters that they were banking on. So now we don't know if it's going ahead. Everyone else has signed contracts. So now you're yeah. in the situation once again of, are you going to continue this franchise and just right. recast? Or are you just going to be like, nope, we're done? Yeah, see, that's that's the one weird thing with continuity because if it's if it's something that's been going on for a very long time, because if I'm like if I'm honest with you, with the first like with the uh, the first Iron Man, I forgot that Terrence Howard was even yeah. in it, and it's very easy it to because one. that was the first movie of the MCU, two thousand eight, ten mm-hmm. years ago. Okay, oh yeah, and the next Iron Man came out in two thousand nine or ten, that I can remember, mm-hmm. and that's. Ironically, in that space, you only had one other MCU movie, The Incredible Hulk, which everyone just looks yeah. at as a redhead stepchild that they just leave, of, like yeah. just just kind of like push him in the corner. Yeah, um, yeah we don't. But we, we yeah, we don't talk. We don't talk about uh, <laughs> about Incredible Hulk. Um, but like, it's easier that way because then mm. he shows up in Iron Man two and he carves his place in there. And even if you had doubts after that, then he shows up in Iron Man three. He shows up in in I believe in Avengers. Probably Avengers Age of Ultron. I know he shows up in Civil War. But, you know, you yeah. have all these movies where he shows up. So it's mm. easy to just be like, okay, well, this is this is Rhodey now. So this is, yeah, this is the new roads right there. Yeah, um, and, and, like, the thing with, like, like, continuity with that is it's super weird. Because, for example, I can't remember if the show's name was actually Spartacus or if it was just a character. But, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I know the one that, there. Yeah, so, like, I watched the series and then I was, like, like I was I was really into the show. And then next season... He's dead. He's like the actor, which I didn't know he yeah, was like actor. Actually... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like when you told me that, I was just like, I was like, oh, what? And I tried watching season two, but it's this completely different guy. And I was so used to seeing that main guy mm-hmm. in like the, I can't even remember if it was season or not, but like, like before, I kept remembering like seeing him before and then watching this new guy trying to assume the same role. To me, it was just like, who's this guy and why is, where's, where's our main guy? Where's our actual guy? Like our actual leader that everybody has been talking to and romancing and like being inspired by. Like I can't, I couldn't get behind this, like this fresh new face with like different hair and like different body Mm. suddenly being like, I am now Spartacus. And I mean, I guess I should, we should touch on, I did bring up the, the volume three, the guardians volume three in a way of like, how do you feel about continuation? But like, um, when you talk about the gar- the whole situation with Guardians Three, uh, you have to mention the fact that James, the reason why James Gunn got fired is because he tweeted some, I guess, pedophilia stuff like ten yeah. years ago, if I remember yeah. correctly, um, and then it got dug up, and that's where he just got cut instantly. And I mean, we all mm-hmm. know that Hollywood scandals have been brutal in the last like oh, two yeah. years, um, but. And I haven't seen what he tweeted. And also, I just saw uh, yesterday or two days ago that, like, apparently there's evidence of him going to a pedophilia-themed party. So the, oh, those boy. are definitely things that aren't great. Um, but then you just, like, I would like to know what that conversation was between Disney Marvel and Gunn. I want to know, like, if Gunn was just, like, accepting responsibility and saying, but look, I changed into a better person. Because that's the angle that everyone said was, like, like we've watched Gunn grow as he took on this responsibility. Yeah. Or is this going to so, be one of those things where, like, now he's not going to ever do anything again because it's just going to be scandal. Although there are already talks that he could take over, like, a DC movie, which mm. DC desperately needs. If you've, if you've watched... Yeah. Any movie Every besides Wonder put me Woman. To sleep. Wonder Woman's yeah. amazing. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. On top of the fact that Gal Gadot is my fucking woman crush every day. She is an day. absolute gem. Oh! <laughs> she is so attractive. Um, but like, uh, Man of Steel, pretty Garbo. Pretty, pretty, pretty mm. CGI fest Garbo. Uh, yeah. Batman, Dawn of Justice, not, uh, d- d- not as bad as I think. Was it Superman Donald Justice or Batman Donald Justice or whatever? Batman v Superman Donald Justice? I don't remember. See, I don't give a <laughs> shit about this. Whatever. We have all these fucking universes. I don't give a shit. The Dark Universe. Whoa. You yeah. Remember that? Remember how that yeah. tried to take off and apparently it's still in development? Um. Anyways. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, like, Batman v Superman, although not as bad as everyone says it was, and I think it's because I watched the Ultimate Edition, which, you know, mm. I did suffer through it because it's almost three hours or three and a half hours long, but it has some good parts and it fills in the blanks that everyone criticized. So it's not a bad movie, but it's not a good movie. 
And then yeah. Wonder Woman was was fantastic. That mm, that movie was so good. And then Justice League, where the best two parts, in my opinion, was Batman and Wonder Woman. Which is a shame that mm. Ben Affleck has talked about stepping down, and now, uh, like, depending on what you read, he is either already stepped down or he yeah. is debating stepping down. So both not right. good signs. Um, but like. The next, the next movie that is supposed to be the big one that's supposed to be coming out, as far as I know, is Shazam. I don't know if you've seen too much oh, about yeah, that. Yeah. You know, so They're Zachary, a lot. Zachary Levi is Shazam, and it's supposed mm. to be like their goofy movie. I mean, like if you've seen the screenshots, if you've seen the advertising, if you've seen anything. The advertising is just him like dancing and all that stuff. But that's the thing. He's because the Lord be... behind Shazam, he's a kid, right? Mm-hmm. He's a kid that he, he Shazam, and then big brolic. Guy. He's like the size of the Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Except he's mm-hmm. Zachary Levi, who put on like twenty pounds of muscle, which mm-hmm. good for good for him, good for him. Yeah, but like, doing it. Uh, that's the thing is, it's it's it does have the superhero values. I mean, we watch like like the Justice League animated stuff, you know, like the one that I think I watched with you a little bit. It's what is it, Doomsday? Mm. I I don't know if it was that one. Wait, wait, wait. I, Say it. Sorry, I'm zoned out. What, what was that? <laughs> we watched. I watched like half of a Justice League animated movie with you when we were at GCC. Oh, okay. I, I remember, but I'm I'm not I'm not sure what the but name was, was, but was. I do remember he was the kid, yeah. and then he, you know, like you could tell that he was still he's still the kid. He's just in this fucking weightlifter's body, so that's yeah. why it's supposed to be like it has those values, but it's also goofier than any of the other ones. Mm. Um, and so that's the thing is like now now you have that that aspect of like James Gunn is essentially blacklisted by Disney. But does that mean other people are going to pick him up to do similar projects? Like, is his style of superhero movie going to be dead? Or And then also another topic is, will they hire the director behind Ragnarok to do Volume 3? Because right. I don't know if you've seen Ragnarok. I hate the Thor movies, but I love Ragnarok. And I think it's because I, they actually, totally took it to a different level. I got it watch listed currently. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to it. It's the best Thor movie and mm. arguably one of the better MCU mo- movies, in my opinion. It's funny. And that's the thing, it's like, it's, MCU, yes, they're action superhero movies, but they have comedy. A lot of them have comedy. The one thing I hate about that, though, is that they're setting that trend that all action movies need a little bit of, like, dry humor, which, for instance, like it or not, Star Wars Episode Eight had, like, some people loved it for its risks, some people hated it. I personally looked at my dad, looked him square in the eyes, and we simultaneously said, that sucked. You guys are probably just like, like... Yeah, we we looked at we looked at each other and just like <laughs> that sucked. That was yep. shit. Now I've been told that if you watch it again, I still have not watched it again. If you watch it again, knowing all that shit, it's better. Mm. But you know, and then I haven't seen Han Solo. So like, but that's the thing is Han Solo was another type of those movies where I guess I could maybe work because you know Harrison Ford. Uh, in the way I look at it, Harrison Ford's character was like always had kind of that humor, uh, right? But it wasn't like oh, yeah, full on really forced. Good. Um, but you, so you just have all those factors then, and then also, you know, it, you have the continuation issues there, which also, if you think about it, then we're bouncing all over the place. I could draw like a fucking like star or like a complicated yeah. snowflake <laughs> with all these points in this one tiny conversation part. Um, but, uh, the DCEU is probably looking at one of those issues if Ben Affleck leaves. Like, are they gonna mm. like if they are they gonna reboot Batman, and then be and then like somehow reboot the DCEU? Which I don't, I can't believe I know this much stuff about it. I I can't believe it. But apparently they're talking about not only a reboot of Batman where he's younger, like casting a younger actor and watching him grow up in Batman in multiple movies. Uh, but, it's almost like Gotham. But then. also, are you ready? But also yeah. softly rebooting the entire universe, not necessarily wiping what they got. But yeah. almost saying like this was the future. Now let's like reboot it. So then it's the past leading up to that. That's that's that, that's rumor stuff. Yeah. So okay, okay, I got a couple points actually. Then so like briefly touching back on the James Gunn controversy. Like I looked up his tweet, and that's why I zoned up, zoned out for a little bit. And like his tweet is, how do I describe it? Like it it is kind of just like. It's 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 gross, but Quote it's it. dark humor. Quote it. I don't even know if I can say that. Is it that I, bad? I, yeah, it's. I, send, I don't even want to say that. On, send it to me on Discord, and then I will. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, like, Whoa. So I, yeah, so I, I see the tweet, and his tweet, I see how it can be controversial, but it's like, it's like shitty, shit posting, dark humor. But like, what I wonder is like, and again, I'm not, I'm not condoning like pedophilia or anything. It's just like, we all have said some really, really. I mean, I say, stupid I say some fucked up shit. I joke. Yeah, about we've some all said up some shit. fucked up things, and it's just like I'm not trying to be like an apologist for like pedophiles. But so I trying to think don't of... think I could ever say something like that. Like, yeah. I, I, okay, to put it in perspective here, it seems a little I'm, too and, slimy. And I'm gonna like, look you straight in the eye and say I am entirely joking when I say stuff like this. But I have a dark humor where, like, if I'm talking about like dropping nukes or like 9/11. Like, it's just kind of how the internet culture. Like you It's just, just internet shit posting yeah. at this point. Like, now, I feel like definitely in a way I can, uh, like, people who are smaller tier, like, obviously we do have people who watch this. Like, we know uh, some people who actually are actively tuning into the podcast and, and listening because they, you know, they like us. But, like, that's mm-hmm. the thing is we don't have millions of people following yeah. us. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, just the other day, Ninja got shit shit on because he makes a decision not to play with female streamers because he does not want in online drama. Yes, and, and quickly to touch on that, I know we're bouncing around all the place. Yes, he could have worded it differently, but I agree with him full force. It's um, just it's the it's the blunt his blunt uh blunt wording blunt wording should be respected a bit more. I think. I will quote this. I can. I will quote this. This is a James Gunn tweet. This is not a JT tweet. This is full a disclaimer. James, full this disclaimer. Is a right James there. Gunn tweet. The you can even we can even edit it in probably. Maybe just blur out the. <laughs> the Expendables <laughs> was so manly. I fucked the shit out of the little pussy boy next to me. The boys are back in town. So he posted this eight years ago, almost on the dot. It's eight sixteen. Oh yeah, uh, he posted this eight fifteen, uh, two thousand ten. Um, and the date today is 8-16-2008. Um, this is before he had any involvement with Marvel. Um, that's a rough tweet. I will admit that. Yeah. That is definitely, that is definitely a really rough tweet. I don't see any humor in that at all. If I had seen that, I mean, obviously, I can't really think, if if he had tweeted this today, I would have been like, You know? Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like you write it and it's like you, you sit there and you write it and you'd be like, no, 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 no. Just like <laughs> quickly deleting, just like, no, 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 no. And that's the thing is like, he should have probably thought twice about this. What Perhaps, bl- yeah. baffles me more though, if you think about it, so this is a month ago that he officially got let go. Um, this is eight years. Eight years of tweets. Mm-hmm. How many, uh, do you have James Gunn's Twitter up right now? Uh, I can nap that real quick. Tell me how many tweets he has. <laughs> like, that's the thing, right? This guy was... So he, whoever discovered yeah. it, I forget who it was, and I guess this guy has a little bit of a background of discovering bullshit like this. He probably dug through thousands of tweets. Unless yeah, James so Gunn doesn't tweet that much. He... I mean, not much for eight years, possibly. I'm not sure how to scale it, but he has like 20,000, and he honestly, he hasn't posted since the scandal or the, the controversy started. He only has like... He has five posts to where he's talking about the tweets mm. he's he's talking about how he's grown it like as a person since then and he hasn't posted since then like it's it's it was july 19th and he says like okay so for example like his last one was anyway that's a completely honest truth after he talked about himself and like how he was back then and things like that he says i used to make a lot of offensive jokes i don't anymore i don't blame my past self for this but i like myself more and feel like a more full human being and a creator today see i don't even see the joke in this tweet though like i'm looking at yeah. it right now and i'm reading yeah. it and there's not like noticeable humor i don't see a joke in this i think Mm. i think if he is trying to say there's a joke he's trying to say that he felt so manly after the expendables i then did that act but yeah that was like that's the and then and then if like then he's probably joking about like uh i i I, you know what i'm not even gonna try and 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 pick this apart any more than i just did because there's really no way to and i can kind of i can see I can see why Disney wouldn't take him back. Mm. Um, that being said, I don't think this is Weinstein level. You know what I mean? I don't think yeah, it's that oh, yeah, level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this is kind of like a slap on the wrist, and I definitely, I think now looking at this tweet, I think I agree that he is not, he shouldn't be brought back. Um, but then you also mm. have to look at the fact, once again, that this was eight years ago, and they dug through a ton of tweets to find this. But That's true. 
Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's probably, in the end, it's probably just Disney, just, they they want to save face because, again, they're, they're a company centered around children and youth. And this guy is, like, even if he didn't mean it, he's well, outwardly this, offensive and, towards and youth. I think the final point of this conversation uh, mm. would be, like, I wonder if some of the people who are defending him have seen this tweet. Because right, I was right. def- I was defending the idea of him him being reinstated after reading this tweet. Um, I, you know, I knew the basic subject of it. After reading this tweet, I could see why he's not reinstated. Yeah, that was that was the first time I actually saw it too, for the most part. Because I was just sifting through articles for the most part, after, like like before I knew about this. But it makes sense. It's just it's Disney. They don't want to have somebody who does seem deadly two children because that's just bad publicity regardless of oh yeah disney's family friendly oh yeah oh yeah so that it makes sense all around and i mean i guess with that that'll take us to our outro so let us know in the comments what you thought about this podcast maybe share some thoughts about your views on single player games multiplayer games what you think about james gunn any sort of controversy surrounding that and maybe even what you think about continuity let us know like subscribe if you like us and we'll keep on dishing out what we can for you i will say and this is totally on me. Uh, did un- totally underestimated the editing time that and processing time for the first podcast. The plan is to record between the days of Wednesday and Friday, upload it by Sunday. That way, when we ask these outro questions, we can actually dig into the comments a little bit and and talk. That kind of give our own two cents about you know certain answers, whether we agree, disagree, blah blah blah, and also just give that exposure out there. Mm. Right. So. Yeah. All right. And for now, this is Sober East signing off. And this is Pinko Panda. I'm signing off too. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Good night.